Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm the founder of Sismo, and I'm excited to speak today about ZK badges that are a new primitive for you to leverage fully your on-chain data, your sovereign data. So this talk will cover the notion of sovereign accounts, self-sovereign identities. But, but before getting into that, I'd just like to spend a few words about Sismo. Uh, we started Sismo because we are concerned about the centralization and lack of privacy of our current social tools and digital identities. We think that there's too much power in the hands of big companies holding our personal data and in governments that can access it at will. And so what we want to do is really to add a privacy and decentralization layer in identity systems so that we remain sovereign. We want to protect human sovereignty, meaning that we want to be sure that individuals remain in control of their societies and that we keep unchecked the central entities that are uh, public or private institutions. What we do is build primitives to empower our self-sovereign identities. So the first primitive that we built are ZK badges. Um, they allow you to leverage your sovereign data. We'll see that later, but they are soul bond tokens. They are non trustable tokens that are attestation, meaning that when you have a ZK badge, it means something about your identity, your data, your reputation, your history. Uh, they allow to, you to do three things. First, they allow you to import reputation from an account to another. Let's say, I have a, let's say that I have a punk on an address, and I want to prove that on another address, have an attestation. I, I get a ZK badge on a new address, and I, I have the proof that I have a punk. It also allows me to selectively reveal what I want from my account, so granularly reveal some personal data, Let's say that I have an account with a lot of data. I'm able to pick one piece of data, let's say the crypto punk ownership, and I'm able to reveal that to someone. I own that without giving my address or anything else. The, the last thing is it allows you to aggregate your data. Let's say that you have um, a punk on an address and a punk on another one, and you'd like to prove that you have two punks without creating a link between your accounts. That's what ZK badges allow you to do. So it allows you to do to control your identities and without creating links between them. So now I think that before getting into the, the technical part of the ZK badges, I'll, I'd like to spend some time on self-sovereign identities. And because that's what badges are for, we build that. It's, it's, our goal is really to, with ZK badges and generally with Sysmo, is to make our sovereign identities more powerful, better than Web2 identities, so better than your Google account. So, a Web2 identity, web identity in the Web2 world, the identity is stored in a, an account, let's say your Twitter account. You choose your username, your password, and they give you an account. Actually, they don't really give you the account. It's still theirs, but you can access it if they are willing to. And you start uh, doing things on Twitter, you interact with others, and you are starting to build your identity. So here you have an identity in a Web2 account that is not yours. It's your identity. You have the same with Facebook, with, with Instagram, with LinkedIn. You have your identities that are on rented accounts. An interesting thing about these identities is that you still have some control over them. You can use them to connect to other services. That's the single sign-on. For instance, I can connect to Typefully with my Twitter account. And it allows me to... Um, I, I can bring some part of my identity that is on, on Twitter to Typefully. So, there is some sort of portability, but of course it's super restricted. At any point, if Twitter thinks that Typefully is, is competing with uh, Twitter, uh, they will remove the access of these accounts. So we see that, yeah, Web2 identities are not yours. It's super restricted what you can do with your identities. Of course, there's no possibility to link your identities together, meaning that it's impossible to create an event where you, inv you invite your Facebook friends, your Twitter friends, your LinkedIn friends, because they are actually competing on your accounts. Like, it's not your accounts, it's theirs, it's their asset, that's how they make money. They want you to put as much data on it as possible. And so that's not your identity, you cannot fully leverage it. And on the other side, we have the self-sovereign accounts that are, for instance, uh, an Ethereum wallet. Uh, it's owned by a private key, meaning that the private key is 
the thing that you must have the private key to do anything with this account. What's amazing too is that it's permissionless. Anyone can create a self sovereign account without asking permission to anyone. So, okay, that's great. What I can do with it, of course, I can start adding some Ether to it, for instance, and I can trade off Uniswap. It starts also to build my identity. Now I have some financial uh, data on my account that is mine. I can buy an ENS name, I can buy an NFT, and I interact on social, uh, on social medias on chain. So by doing this, a bit like on Twitter, I built my identity, but this time this identity is mine, the data I need is mine, and it's controlled by my private key. By the way, by, by, by using ENS, I also create this as a public account almost, so very interesting. So that's one part, but actually self sovereign accounts are more interesting than blockchain, they are bigger than that. Because, okay, you can use the private key to send transactions, to, to use decentralized applications, but you can you also use them to log in on, into an app. I think you know, using Snapshot or other applications, that now you have login system systems based on wallets, that's called sign-in with Ethereum, and you can log into an app, traditional app, but instead of an email and a password, you log in with your wallet. So they also are a wallet, self sovereign identities accounts are better than, than traditional uh, accounts, even at Web2 stuff. So, okay, I can connect to Snapshot with my Ethereum wallet. I send a message, they say, okay, you're logged in. And what's great is that you bring your whole identity to the app. So what does Snapshot is, okay, you're logged in as Daydream.is, or you have some AVE, or you have some Uniswap tokens. You can vote on my governance with it. So that's where you, can, uh, you, you start to see the sovereignty that we have over our identities with wallets, that I can bring my identity to the app. But there's something that is less cool, because it's the beginning, we're immature, is the fact that when I do this, I actually share everything, all my identity. Let's say that I have an account, my main account that is private with a lot of data, my ERC20s, my assets, my NFTs, so many things, and that, that I want to access an app to, let's say, that are gated by crypto punk owners because I just want to be part of a cool community and access a chat app. Using sign-in with Ethereum, I would have to connect with my main wallet and give so much data about myself. Here, what we saw is that at every time that I connect to an app with sign-in with Ethereum, I bring all my data. But again, the self sovereign accounts are amazing. They're controlled by a private key, and you can do even more. You can do zero knowledge proofs. And with this account, you can basically select a piece of data that you want to share, and, and that's it. So again, it's super powerful, and that's everything. Uh, that's, that's what badges are about. It allows you to selectively reveal some part of your sovereign data. So again, what they are, they are tokenized at attestation, meaning that when a, a wallet has this SBT, this non transferable token, it means that it means something about the identity. It, it's an attestation, like they have a crypto punk, they voted on the governance, they have an, a certain number of Twitter followers, stuff like that. It's ZK because it's, it's minted by a ZK attester. This ZK attester is a smart contract that accepts zero knowledge proofs. And okay, you brought me the zero knowledge proof that you have a crypto punk, now I give you the badge that you have a crypto punk. And it's on EVM chains. Uh, it's um, deployed on, currently on Polygon, but we plan to go everywhere, especially on, on layer two, of course. Now, a, a, a small thing about badges, that a, a small nuance that's not very important, but still, these are ERC-1155. Each badge has a token ID in this contract, and that means that each badge, each badge is a sort of ERC-20. It's not really an NFT, it's an ERC-20, and for the same badge, you can have different balances. So we'll see that later why it's interesting, but uh, you have a value of the attestation corresponding to the balance of your badge, and the higher balance, maybe, it means that you have more followers or you, your badge means more. We'll see that later. So the process of minting a ZK badge is pretty simple. Uh, I have a source account. Here is the adrian.eth. I have data on it, my sovereign data. One piece of data is that I have a crypto punk. I want to prove it. I generate a ZK proof and send the ZK proof to the attester. The attester validates that. Okay, uh, the agent it has a punk. Uh, I validate, I mean the badge, but the ZK attester at no point will know about my address. Last thing he does is that he stores the nullifiers. We'll see that later on. 
So to, to really understand better ZK badges, um, I'd like to use two uh, identities. Let's say that I have my public wallet. Again, Deirdre.eth, I have my ENS names, I donated at Gitcoin, I'm a verified human, meaning that I dox myself. I uploaded a video with my name, master name, and it's linked to my address. So this address is completely doxed, like everybody can know everything about it. I have some NFTs, I intended to confront it, so I have some pops. And actually, I have another wallet. This, is, this mine is my private wallet. That's where I do my DGEN stuff. I have a lot of transactions. I maybe have a lot of assets, hopefully. That's a dream. I don't have this, but uh, that would be cool to be a DGEN. A lot of assets, a lot of NFTs, a lot of things. I don't. What's true is that I never want to connect them together. But I want to use them together because both have valuable data. And I want to use them together. So that's what RZK Badge is about. So the first thing that it allows you to do, I'm a verified human on Daydream.eth, I'm doxed. But now let's say that I want to access with my private wallet an application that requires you to prove that you are a human. Of course, I don't want to link them together. So what I'll do is that I will have the proof of humanity ZK badge on my unknown wallet, and it will just reveal what I need, that is, I'm a human. I have somewhere a source account that is doxed, and I was able to do this badge only once. Okay. So now we'll get into the technicalities, how everything is done. The ZK attester I told you about, the one we currently use, is the Hydra S1 ZK attester. Hydra S1 is for the proving scheme, because we, this attester accepts a certain type of ZK proofs. And I'll explain what those ZK proofs are. So behind the Hydra S1 ZK attester, there's always a group of eligible accounts. That's how it works. So for instance, behind the ZK, the proof of humanity ZK badge, there is the list of all the registrants that are on the POH registry. So of course, there is my address. We see this, that there is a value to each address, to each account. This value will be the balance of the badge. And with this, you can, um, you, you can use it to, to code some sort of tiers. So let's say, imagine that uh, in V2, POH have a super verified user. Like it's uh, verified but very well with KYC or I don't know what. You could have maybe the dot is with the value 2, and it will give the badge with the balance 2. And everyone that has two badges, like that has balance 2 of this badge, means they are super verified. So again, yes, uh, here it's just you have POH, you are in the group with one, you are not, you're not in the group. So you have the group of eligible accounts. These are the accounts that will be able to meet the badge. And we put them in a Merkle tree. It's a Poseidon Merkle tree, so that it's not friendly, we'll see that. But in the leaves, you have all the eligible accounts. We have the root, we publish the root on chain, and we'll see what we do with everything. So the, 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 the way the, the badge is minted is first you go to your front end, so I'm on Sysmo, I'm connected with the .eth, the source account. I, first, I upload the Merkle tree, now I have in my front end, everything happens on the front end. That's what guarantees the privacy. So on, in my front end, I have the Merkle tree, I have my account, and what I will do, I will do three things. First, I will prove that I'm the owner of the internet. And these three things will be done in a ZK circuit. So first thing, I'm the owner of the internet. Second, the internet is in the Merkle tree, the Merkle proof. And the third thing is, I actually own the destination account. Let's make sure that I cannot give badges to others or that I cannot spam another account. So these three things, I, I'm the source account, destination account, I'm part of the tree. I do that in the ZK snark. I get a ZK proof. The ZK proof reveals nothing, but there is an address that, like this user has proved to have an address that is part of the tree. I give that to the ZK attester, and the ZK attester does two things. First, it verifies the proof, okay. Uh, it's valid, ZK magic, and then it registers a nullifier. I think that there was some presentation at DevCon about this, but it's a way to make sure that from one source I can do only one batch. And for this, I register a nullifier. It's the anonymized version of my address, basically. That's great, and now I have my badge on my destination account, and there's no link. Nobody can know from this destination account what account was used to generate it. So again, we saw that ZK, the, this ZK attester um, allows you to prove from a group, to create from a group a ZK badge. And actually, this ZK attester, anyone here in the, in the room 
can create its own ZK batch. That's what we build Sysmo. We don't build Sysmo to do some partnerships or something like that. It's a primitive. Everything is open source, of course. And very easily, in 15 minutes, if you are developers, uh, we have a tutorial that, 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 that helps you with that. You can fetch from your subgraph, from uh, BigQuery, from anything. You can fetch your group, choose the metadata for your badge, choose the visual, and that's done. So again, uh, anybody can create this ZK badge, can create the group as ZK badge. And we just released today the factory of Sysmo. It allows for even people that are neither coder or designers to build a ZK badge. It, it works that way. You, you add metadata. We have a SVG editor to create your ZK badge. And then you have just to copy past a list of address. You, you push the button and done. You have your ZK badge available. So that's, I think that's super great. Uh, so I invite you to, to, to try that. Um, and before that, I'd like to, uh, before getting, uh, now I want to speak about the protocol. So we saw that Sysmo is open. Anybody can add its group. It will have your, their own ZK badge for their user community. But even better, actually, so that's what I told you about. Anybody can add its group. You get the badge. Now what is even greater for more advanced developers is to create your own attester. Instead of you using the rules of Hydra S1, I told you, verify membership, uh, verify ownership, you can create your own new rules to verify the user request. So for instance, you can use Semaphore. It's another ZK scheme that will be a ZK attester. But you can also use a public attester, like the proof that you would require from user is not a ZK proof, but a Merkle proof and a signature, EC recover. Or you could even create a centralized attester, meaning that the proof that you have to send to get your badge is a signature of the third party. So again, that's, that's what we're trying to do. It's really primitive. We're not here to, yeah, we want you to have fun with this so that you can really control the data of your users and, and that you can build weird stuff like DeFi did uh, in 2020. It did weird stuff with composability between all the financial applications. Here, what we want to do is weird stuff about the social capital that you have. So that's it. Again, all is open source. I invite you to read the docs and uh, our GitHub. So now we get back a bit uh, to recap a bit. So what it allows you to do, I told you that it, it allows you to import reputation from a public to an unknown wallet, but you can do the reverse. Again, if I was a DGEN on my unknown wallet, I could import this reputation to my public wallet, have an Ethereum Power User ZK badge. It's a ZK badge that only top 0.1% Ethereum users can mint. And so that way I proved as the agent of ETH that I'm a DGEN, but I never revealed my wallet. So that's, yeah, one big thing. The other thing, if you think about it, what happens if I mint the badge on a one-time address, fresh new address? What I've done by doing this is that I'm able to reveal just exactly what I need. It's not about building an identity. It's to, I, I need to prove to someone that I meet some criteria. I create a new address. I mean the badge there. And I'm able to prove exactly what I need. So here on Adrian.eth, again, I have a lot of data. One of the data that is mine, so Ren, is that I have, a lot, I have the HCC pop. And thanks to this, I can get, I'm eligible to the proof of attendance ZK badge. Behind this ZK badge, the group of eligible users is people that went to either a DEF CON or HCC or ETH Berlin, very legit physical events. And so I'm able to mean that to a fresh new address. And then I can use this address to, for instance, get private merchandising or access airdrops to get into events. And with this, what I was able to do is prove that I went into one of the top conferences, that I'm a human. And not that I went to HCC, not I'm Adrian Notice. That's, that's leveraging your data. That's what we call it. So super excited about this. The last thing that we intend to do that is not live is the way to aggregate your reputation. In Sysmo, our governance is not token-based. Oh, it is token-based, but not financial token-based. It's been, uh, is based on contributions, meaning that the more contributions you did for Sysmo, the higher voting power you have. Uh, again, it reuses the thing that I told you about, the balance of the token. Basically, the more contributions you did, you, the higher you will be in the tier of contributor and the higher voting power. So here, with ZK badges, you will be able to aggregate your reputation from your private wallet that maybe you held by using a lot uh, Sysmo, and from your public wallet that maybe you help by doing some threads, some communication about Sysmo. So yeah, again, I think for governance power, this is very, very interesting to have reputation-based governance instead of just uh, 
like who has been like instead of ERC20 is only that is financial capital or communities that are ruled by your NFT that you just have to first come first serve and it's like a airdrop farmers this kind of stuff here these tokens means a lot and it's private so you can really speak your mind there's no risk as, at knowing that uh, you're a team member or I don't know so we are super excited about this new primitive so now uh, I, I'd like to speak about the long-term vision of Sysmo um, again I'm able to aggregate view. Uh, I, I'm able to aggregate data. The way it works is that basically, any time I want to use an account to prove some stuff about it, I will sign a message with it, and it gives this account the ability to be in the zk world. Like from now on, I can prove everything about my data. So the way it works is that I will import into the Sysmo Vault. That's your encrypted uh, data vault that is only accessible to yours. I will store the signatures that I told you about. So I sign with Daniel.is. Now I'm in the vault with the anon, I'm in the vault, and now, as a user, I'm the only one that has access to all my data. And now it doesn't matter whether it comes from an address, two address, or I don't know what. I'm the user, I have, yeah, access to everything, and I can use it as I want. So, for instance, let's say that I want to access an airdrop, and they require me to prove that I'm a human, that it's a CB-resistant airdrop, that would be great to have that. Uh, so they require me to prove and that I'm a human and that, I don't know, that I traded a lot on their platforms or, the, or that I am a big user. So that's what allows me the vault to do. I can generate the ZK proof, let's say on a one-time address, on the go, and I can give, I can connect with signing with Ethereum to this uh, service and reveal just what I want. The, the other thing that is interesting is that you can in the long run, we are using badges and SBTs because we think that they are tremendously great at standardizing things because everybody knows how to fetch a token, how to reach a token. And that's why I think that they have an advantage over VCs, actually, because the standardization is, is, be is better and you can do crypto native stuff. You can, what we did with ZK is the ability to programmatically code reputation in, 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 in some sort. So, we are very bullish on VCs and SBTs, but, but yeah, we are mainly using tokens. It's a big question. Why are we using tokens? Because they are great at standardizing. Once you have reputation as a token, it's super easy for anyone to fetch it to know that. The, we have the sign-in with Ethereum tools and all these things. But on the long-term vision, do we really need to send the ZK proof to a smart contract to mint the badge if what we want to prove is to a third party? Let's say I want to prove to a merch store that I have CryptoPunk. Do I really need to send a badge on an address? Maybe not, I can directly send the ZK badge to this third party. So that's the, the big, big vision of Sysmo, is really to be, to be a Google Connect on top of your sovereign identities. You add your, all your accounts, your Twitter account, your GitHub account, your Solana address, your Bitcoin wallet, your Ethereum wallet. You aggregate all of that, and then when you want to sign to an app, they say, okay, uh, I want a bit like when you connect to with Google Connect, they say, okay, they will access your email, your contacts, your, all these things. What we don't hear is that, okay, I, I connect with Sysmo. This app wants to see your amount of, I don't know, NFTs, your total net worth, all these things. And you choose. You choose what you want. And if you choose your full, to bring your full reputation, maybe, maybe we'll, you'll have access to the best services. But you can also choose to just reveal what you want because you don't want to give to this application everything. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, really about Sysmo, is trying to... We have more and more on-chain data. We have more and more great projects that are bringing off-chain data to on-chain data. Uh, but today, we cannot really leverage it. We, the privacy is a real issue about identity because we are used to Web2 identity that are private because they are closed. It's closed gate. They don't want to share anything. So, of course, it's private by design. But on Web3, we is public by design. But this also caused some issues. So. I hope that, uh, that I, I shared my excitement about what we can do with sovereign identities. And uh, we're hiring, by the way, so if the mission is exciting to you, uh, we are a very small team, we are just seven, but we are very passionate about what we do. So feel, re feel free to reach out. And again, everything is open source. We, we spent a lot of, of uh, energy to the documentation, to the quality of our code. So yeah, we're here for the long term. We'd like to have many contributors and yeah, reach out. Thank you, guys. Do we have time for our questions, or I don't? Okay. So if if you guys have questions, happy to. 
Um, hi, thank you for the talk. That was super interesting. So my question was about um, updating of ZK badges. So for example, in the example you gave, you said you own the punk, and then you create a ZK badge that you own the punk. What happens to that badge when you transfer the punk and don't own, the, own it anymore? Yeah. So actually, for the Hydro S1 attester, uh, the badge is a snapshot, meaning that it doesn't update. But that's where actually the protocol is interesting, that you can create another attester that could be updatable. And like, I don't know, every, like some, you could code that, like the way to, for a, a, a central party to update the route and make so that the badges that were issued are no longer issued. But I think that it's still a bit complex. And the best way is really to think about ZK badges as a snapshot attestation. And it's up to the application to ask for users to renew. So yeah, that, that's really the, the way we think about it now. Yeah, hi, hi. thank you very much. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, lack of privacy is, of course, one of the uh, barriers uh, in this ecosystem. So thank you for addressing that. I uh, have a general question about how do you collaborate with like, individuals and, and projects within the space? Because at the end of the day, it's about going to market and it's it's promoting your tool to yeah, individuals and teams that are building. Could you explain what kind of projects? Um, Any projects? Yeah, yeah. Okay. just more generally, what's your strategy to, to proliferate your tool? OK, so I think we are a project that, that, that should be used by many applications. First, I think that we are one of the first teams that are using ZK for a very concrete case. And as I told you about, we can have multiple ZK testers. So if we have a ZK team that has created a new ZK scheme, we are using Gross 16, uh, Hydro S1 that is very specific. But if another team has another way to create uh, attestations, we can think about chain links, Zico, for instance. They are able to do ZK attestation from Web2 data. They're welcome to build an attestor here. And that's why we built it. Uh, for other teams, it's if you want to do reputation within your governance, you can create your ZK badge. Or even better, you can create your own ZK attestor and build logic in it. And so whenever somebody, let's say, mint a ZK badge that I played on, on a certain game, it updates the metadata of, uh, of their NFT. Or you can do so much things. It's really built to have fun as developers. But it's going to gain time for it to educate everybody. But generally happy to speak with everyone. I have a question here. Uh, really fascinating talk, super amazing. And one of the things that popped into my mind when you said that this is comparable to the DeFi movement, the DeFi summer. DeFi came with a lot of hacks and a lot of blood by fire. So how do you protect the privacy? Say we put all our addresses, have this like great identity and you know, how, yeah, some of the risk of that and what do you see for that? Yeah, um, when I was saying that is that DeFi was raw it was the first time we discovered, like before, banks and insurance and all, like all the financial services were provided by Web2 applications that didn't talk together. And we discovered, what? I can deposit in a lending tool and then use that to bring liquidity to an exchange and then use that to stake somewhere. It's huge. But we could do the same with social capital. Like today, it's impossible to use your, let's say you are Uber driver. Uh, 2,000 uh, drives, five stars. You cannot use it to get a good loan. That's what we want to do. Like we want to have credit score based on reputation, and you can access a better interest rate. So, so again, we are new primitive that should allow new stuff uh, in a privacy-preserving way. So yeah, that's. Uh, I think it. Yeah. I think that time's up for now. Okay. Maybe you will. Yeah, be really happy to stay there if, uh, for more questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.